Hey you Infigly Musical Teachers! It's the end of the school year and you're probably wondering what type of activities you should be doing in your classroom to help you make it through to the end of the year. Well don't worry, I have lots of video or I lots of ideas for you in this video, so please stay tuned for that. If you're new around here, my name's Rainy Barton and I teach elementary music and middle school theater. I've been teaching for about seven or eight years, and my goal for this channel is to help instill a love and appreciation of music into the heart of every child and to help music teachers do that. And we do that through tips and tricks, strategies, all sorts of different lessons plans and ideas and curriculum so if you're interested in that please like and subscribe to my channel down below it really does help my channel grow now if you haven't watched last week's video then you're probably going to want to do that because last week's video was where we dived into k through two so grades kindergarten first and second grade activities to do for music lessons for the end of the year and now we're going to talk about three through five and as I said in that video, um, which I will link that video under here, this is like testing season, concert time, award shows, field trips, field days, all sorts of crazy and exciting things that are happening at the end of the school year. But your students, of course, are going to be wild as ever. And so our lessons need to accommodate for that. This is time to have fun. This is the time to do the things that you didn't have time for in your other lessons, like parachutes and stuff. This is not necessarily the time to start presenting or introducing brand new concepts. I usually use a lot of the end of the year to review and just ultimately make music with my students. We want really easy, no thought, no prep lesson plans, and don't make it harder on yourself. So that's what we're going to talk about in today. Today is going to be grades three through five, so if you need help with those older lesson plans for the end of the year, please check this out. I will link to everything that I talk about underneath here, and like I said, let's just get the ball rolling. Okay, so one of the first things that you can do at the end of the year, which you could do this with K through five, but I typically keep it for three through five is musical May. And I have been doing this. If you if you see me linking my down below, it's because my notes are there. I've been doing this um, with third through fifth grade for about four years now. We learned about musicals in May. I got this idea from Miss King's Music Room. I will link to her blog post down below where she talks about this. She has a bunch of resources on TPT for this. And basically, they watch a musical, they take notes on the musical during it so that they're actually paying attention, and then we complete a few sh worksheets afterwards to round out the lesson. Like I said, I got these from Miss King's. The movies I typically use are in fifth grade. I always show them Singing in the Rain, which I love so much, and they always really love it too. In fourth grade, I show Mary Poppins, and in third, I show Sound of Music. Now, I will say Sound of Music is extremely long, so you might want to start it at the end of April if you want to use that, depending how long your classes are, or you might want to start that beginning of April and do like 20 minute increments so that you actually have time to do other stuff. It depends how you want to lay it out. If you want to do other stuff and not just do the musicals the whole time, then you're going to want to do that. Um, but I typically just take like the last two or three weeks and just make it musical May. Um, I do let them watch the whole movie through. I do get permission from my admin to do this. I like giving them exposure as some have never seen a musical before. And I try to do ones that like are classics, you know, and also appropriate because she has a couple like Annie and stuff and Seven Brides for Seven Brothers that I don't know if that would be considered okay for this sort of thing. Another act thing that you can always do in your music room is all types of review games, rhythmic games, melodic games, all types of stuff. So I'm just going to talk through a couple of these. A couple of these are going to be repeated from K through two because some of them I really just love, like Captain's Coming, which I have an entire video dedicated to that game. It basically is a game I created that helps them practice their rhythms, but also lets them play that ships and sailors game where like they have to be like four men eating or three men pointing north or like whatever it is. Uh, so I will link that video under here as long as as well as my lesson plan pack for that if you're like uh, that sold me I just want it. But basically it's just they read a couple rhythms and then they have to do an action and they read a couple rhythms and they do an action and if they don't do the action in time or they're not in the correct number of people in that group for the action then they are eliminated until it's one man standing and they love that game. They pay a lot of attention during that game so that's definitely what I would recommend. Another one that I mentioned that can be good for both is for corners. You can use it for solfege, for rhythm, for instrument families. The availabilities or the possibilities are basically endless. But what you do is you commit to four corners in your room. You decide what concept you're going to use it for. They have about 10 seconds to get into a corner. If they don't make it in time, then they're out. And then on the screen, you will have four different options. Like maybe it's rhythms, for example, and you have four different rhythm patterns. You play one. Whichever one is played is the one, corner that's out and all those kids are out. So I've done this for rhythm. I've done this for solfege before where I do a, sing a solfege pattern. I've done this for instrument families where I play a clip of an instrument and whichever instrument it was is there. There are many of these that you can already purchase available on TPT. So I will link to my favorite ones that I use. But Four Corners is always a fabulous one. And they ask to play like 10 rounds of this like 
I kid you not. We also talked about Asteroid, which Asteroid is from Becca's Music Room. I will link to hers underneath here. Basically, the kids all stand on a dot. They, you clap a rhythm and they move their feet to that rhythm and then you do a couple patterns and when you shout asteroid they have to race back to their dot and if they're the last one there then they've been eliminated and they also ask for this game hundreds of times so just take the games that they ask for all the time and use them and we're getting into a couple of different ones that we use for just three through five like rhythm or meter relay races which i can't remember where i got the meter relay race from but they all are essentially the same for, and which I do practice meter in fourth and fifth grade, it would have, I'd have a bunch of rhythms or meter, whatever you want to do all over the floor. And I will have the kids divided into teams. And for the meter one, it'll, I'll say, find a meter of four and the kids will race around and they have to find their team's color with that meter and race back in time. And if they got the meter right, then they get to keep it. For the rhythm relay one, typically how I do it is I have a bunch of rhythms divided by color and team scattered on the other side of the room. And the other kids, in my old classroom, I would use one of those scooters that you could sit on, the like the ones that are in the PE class, you know, the, like square ones. And they would have to, yeah, they'd hear a rhythm, they'd scoot across, find it in their rhythms, scooter back, and then whoever got there first got the point. Um, now I just do it where I do locomotor movements. So I'll be like, I'll like pick one out of a hat. I'll be like, um, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, you have to crawl and they have to crawl, or you have to hop, or you have to skip, or you have to leap, whatever it is. And then that is how they have to move from the other side of the room. And that's always a fun one. Relay races are super great. There are a bunch of these out there as well on TPT. So I will link to some of my favorites underneath here. And we have meter tag. And I learned this from a friend forever ago. And my kids ask for this all the time. So if your kids know meter, this is the way how you do it. So you have um, an instrument, typically I play it on my temple blocks at the, the front and I do, I practice a meter of two, three, and four for them walking in it. So we practice walking in one, two, one, two. But the thing is they can only walk on beat one. They can only take a step on beat one. They have to step on the beat. So if they're doing it in a four, then it's step, wait, 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 step, wait, wait, wait. And how the tag aspect comes in, if you pick one or two people to be taggers, and they have the power to tag people, but they can't move past beat one either. And so it's just a bunch of them jumping or stepping around the room playing tag to this game. And then they want to all be the taggers. Sometimes they want to keep the beat. It is so much fun. My kids have a blast with it. You do just have to be careful if they ever are like, oh, this person got me. And they're like, oh, this person didn't. They rock, paper, scissors. Whoever loses is the one that has to go. So. That is always a tried and true plan for rhythm review and meter review in my classroom. We also, of course, have Jeopardy and Kahoot. I'm just gonna tie those two together because you could find musical Jeopardy. You can type that into Google. You can find a musical Kahoot for a concept that you wanna review and Kahoot is always super fun. If you don't have iPads or stuff readily available for them, I just make, I'll cut out the colors. So it's like red, yellow, green, and blue. I get construction paper and I cut out little strips for them and they just hold it up with their color of what they think the answer is. And that has worked really well for me thought we can still do Kahoot in my classroom because I don't always have access or availability to iPads. I do now, but not at my old school. I didn't. And then Jeopardy, same thing. I don't make them answer in the form of a question just because that's foreign to them, but that could be something really fun for them as well. And then segueing from Musical Jeopardy, we have Music Trash Get Ball, which I talked about with basically uh, combining Jeopardy and basketball. If they get the question right for their team, they get to shoot a trash get, a trash get ball into the hoop. And if they make it, they get another point. If they don't make it, they don't lose any points for that. But that's just more incentive to get them to play because every kid likes basketball and likes to shoot something into a hoop. Um, and I do have a couple of lesson packs for that that I will link underneath this video in case you're interested in pre-made rhythmic music trash get ball lessons. But those are typically the activities that I use for review. I mean, there's a bunch of other review games as well, but these are just a couple ideas to get you started for the end of the year. Up next, then we move to movement activities and singing games. Here are just a couple of my tried and true favorites that I've used with my third, fourth, and fifth graders that are always fun. We have Cut the Cake, which if you don't know that one, it goes like this. Clap your hands together, give yourself a shake. Make a happy circle, then you cut the cake. And so how that one goes is they, they're in a circle, they clap their hands together, they give themselves a shake, they grab hands on make a big a circle, and then you cut the cake. So you have someone outside the circle walking around on then you cut the cake, they chop the hands of two students holding hands together. And whichever two they stop in between, they take their place and they put their hands out like this. And the other two have to run opposite ways around the circle 
they have each I make them high five each other as they run past so that they don't run into each other. Keep running. And whoever gets back first and taps that person's hand is now the baker. That's what we call them, the baker that gets to go around the circle. And so that's a super fun one. I typically use this one for um for so fa mi re do. Uh you can use it for that. Um, but I also just use it as a fun game to get them singing, dancing, and moving at the end of the year. So that is a fun and easy one, and they love playing that game. We also have just mirroring activities. So I got these mirroring ideas from Game Plan by Jeff Krisky, or Jeff Krisky and, and Tump, or Jeff DeLellis, Jeff and Randy. That's what I'm saying. Jeff and Randy's Game Plan. And basically, all they do is you put on some music, and they have to mirror each other. But I tell them they have to do it so slowly to the point where I can't tell who's in charge and who's not. Because if you're doing it quick, then it's not really a mirror. And so they'll have to do stuff with their partner. And they only get to change when they hear me chime the triangle. I'll go ding. And then wherever they are, they immediately switch who's in charge and it has to take over from there. And I've seen some really interesting movement come out of that, honestly. Some kids are very creative, some not so much. Like there's stuff that I see them do that I'm like, wow, I would never have thought of that in a million years. And then there's some that I have to walk around and basically say, if I tap you, it means like you're not doing it right. You're going too fast. You're not keeping up for your partner, something to that effect. But mirroring is super fun. They love it. They love seeing the song that I pick, which of course you want to pick a slower one. Sometimes I pick a kind of upbeat one, but if you make it too upbeat, Upbeat, then they decide that they need to be upbeat and then that defeats the purpose of the mirroring activity. We also have the game Jolly Miller and that one is one of my favorites, my personal favorites. It goes like this. There was a Jolly Miller and he lived by himself as the wheel went round he made his wealth with one end in the hop hopper and the other in the bag as the wheel went round he made his grab. And how that one works is the you have a circle Every kid has a partner except for one and they're doing skaters hold with their partner so they're walking side by side with their partner like this. And the one student on the inside of the circle is walking around the circle and the students are walking around the circle singing the song as they go. And on he made his grab, all the kids that are on the inside of the circle have to let go of their partner and walk up to the next partner and grab their hands. And the person on the inside, their goal is to steal one of those partners and get there before one of those kids. And that one is always a fun one. It does take a while to review skater hold. So I always introduce it as, I can't remember. I think I did like your right hand shakes their right hand or something like that. I can't remember exactly right now. I would have to have a kid with me to be able to do it. But I basically just teach it and then they learn it and it goes from there. And the kids really like that one. That one is fun. If a kid is repeatedly not able to get one of the people's like switch with someone, I just switch them out so that that kid is not there forever. So that's a fun and easy one as well. That one's good for 16th notes. Then we have a Japanese pa rock, paper, scissors game called Say Say Say, which I learned at some music conference forever ago. But the song goes like this. It goes, Say Say Say, oh yo yo yo, okalaka, 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 hoi! And so what you do is you have newspaper, which I cannot always find newspaper. So I have made giant construction paper and taped them together for this purpose. Well, what you would do initially is you would get a newspaper and each kid would have a piece of newspaper opened all the way and they'd be standing on it across from their partner. And there are motions for this and I can't remember them right now. So I'll try to link to an article about this song down below. But basically it's rock, paper, scissors. And at the end they're going, oh, galaka, oh, galaka, oh, galaka, hoi. And then they do rock, paper, or scissors. And whoever wins doesn't have to do anything. Whoever loses has to fold their paper in half. And then you keep going and you keep going until eventually the paper gets folded so much that like the kid is having to stand on one foot or like one heel or whatever. And basically when they fall over or they're not standing on the newspaper anymore, they lose. And then that person wins. And then if there's people still in the game still, then I move them up to another player and they compete in that way. And that is a super fun one. My kids love that game, but it does require some setup. You need newspaper. Oh, did you miss this angle? Because my camera battery died and I had another one ready to go and apparently it didn't charge. This battery holder sucks. Anyway, as I was going, the last movement um, slash singing game I have is this paper plate game that I actually learned from my music sub because she used to be a band director and she taught me this and it's so fun. Basically, you have, t you have kids in an alley. So like kids on one side, kids on the other. And there's a paper plate in between each partner set, right in between the middle of them. And you're keeping the beat for them the whole time. I'm going to use some colored pencils to do it. And there's four actions that they might have to do. If you hear head, you have to tap your head. If you hear shoulders, you have to tap your shoulders. If you hear clap, you have to, or no, it's head, 
knees, snap and clap. And so like I could do any order for this and you start out slow and you have to do it on the beat. So it'd go head, knees, clap, snap, snap, clap, head, plate. And when you hear plate, one of them, you, your, your job is to steal the plate away from the other person by stepping your foot on it and sliding it towards you. And if you get it, then you're in and then you have to find another competitor. Um, but eventually each round gets faster and faster. So eventually you're going head, knees, head, plate, or whatever. And if they mess up also on the other actions as well, then they are out. And so that is a super fun game. My kids absolutely love that. It's just getting them, you know, moving and grooving and all sorts of stuff. So I definitely recommend that. That is a fun one to use at the end of the year. The next two ideas are activities that were also in my K through two one, but honestly, they just work for three through five. One is using instrument and rhythm play alongs from YouTube, whether they're rhythmic ones, whether they're body percussion ones, whether they're boom whacker ones. And I will link to my favorite ones underneath here. I use ones like musication for boom whackers, where the students have to play a song using specific boom whacker colors. There's rhythm play alongs. Like if you want a quarter rest one, you can probably find one where they use a popular song and they have to play the rhythms to them. You can do that for all different sorts of stuff. There's body percussion ones, like there was one to respect by Aretha Franklin, where they're like doing a specific body pattern activity for like the verse and the chorus and the bridge and all of that sort of stuff. So those are always fun ones to pull out at the end of the year. I will link to my favorite YouTube channels for those sorts of things that you can find endless amounts of activities on. You can find whatever musical concept you're generally looking for. Those are always a fun time. And then of course, always at the end of the year, you can use folk dances as well. I would generally recommend using folk dances that you have already been using in your classroom. I probably wouldn't take time to introduce a new one unless it's super easy. I wouldn't introduce a crazy one like Sasha the Donut. If you don't know that one by New England Dance Masters, it's a personal favorite. Sasha is always a great one for the end of the year. I start and end my year with those songs, although not this year because I'm already on maternity leave and also... I'm pretty sure my kids would murder me if I made them do Sasha again because they just had to do it like a million times to practice for our school's performance where we did a folk dance night and um, I'm pretty sure they're tired of that song by now. But anyway, so folk dances are always an easy one. Uh, I will link honestly to New, Ling New England Dance Masters underneath here and Rhythmically Moving in case you want to learn more about folk dances. I will also link to my video where I talk a lot more about folk dances and be excited because I'm actually doing a music teacher conference in July where I talk a lot more in depth about folk dances, how to introduce them, how to start them, all sorts of folk dance tips and tricks. So get ready for that. It's going to be a fun time. That's coming to you first on this channel. Okay, but moving on. And we also have movement manipulative activities. And so a couple of my favorites, one of them is doing In the Hall of the Mountain King from Artie Almeida's Parachute Scarves Ribbons book, which I will link underneath here because if you don't have that book, you definitely should. But that one basically uses In the Hall of the Mountain King where half the kids are keeping the steady beat on weirows during it. And of course, it speeds up throughout the song. And the other half are keeping the beat and doing a routine using kickballs. And then of course, we switch like if you did weirows this round, you do kickballs the next. If you did kickballs, then you do weirows. And that one is super fun fun. Um, so definitely look into that, that book if you haven't already before. I'm sure you can also probably find that activity on YouTube if you type in Artie Almeida in the Hall of the Mountain King, but that one is one that I use at the end of the year. You can also do cup routines at the end of the year. So I know that Artie Almeida has a flag one in there, and I think she also like one to Sousa. And then I know, and I've been to Harlem, I've been to Dover, I've traveled this wide world all over. There's one to that song. Um, there's a bunch of cup, different cup songs. I know a bunch for Christmas time for like sleigh rides. If you want to pull out sleigh rides, you can. If you want to pull out Adam's family at the end of the year, you can, because there's a really fun one on YouTube for that. But they all just do the same sort of thing. You need to pick an easy cup rhythm game, depending on like where your students are at. Some of them are easier than others. So like keep in mind based off of what your students are able to do. But cup routines at the end of the year are always a great thing to try and do. And then you also have passing games at the end of the year, which three of my favorites are Obuisana, Shanghai Chicken, and Dry Bones, which um, Obuisana is basically just passing it back and forth like this. It's literally going like, Obuisana, sa, na, na, Obuisana, sa. Obuisana, sa, na, na, Obuisana, sa. And so I have a lesson pack game for that that explains that in much further detail. So if you want it, check that out. Then I will link that under here. You could also use Shanghai Chicken, which I am forgetting the words right now, but that is just, that is a passing game where you're actually tossing an egg shaker back and forth. And that's a super fun one. But there is a blog post that I learned about that one from. So I'll link to that blog post under here. 
And then we also have Dry Bones, which I believe is just literally the same thing. It's just a passing game, but he goes, Dry Bones, come skipping down the valley. One of these bones are mine. Dry Bones, come skipping down the valley. Some of these bones are mine. Some of these bones are Ezekiel's bones. Some of these bones are mine. Some of these bones are Ezekiel's bones. Some of these bones are mine. So that's another one that's super fun. Passing games are great to make sure your students know how to keep the steady beat. They are also good just for fun because it takes a while. They take up a lot of time. You have to like introduce your students and how to do passing games. Cause some just require you passing from side to side. Some require like back and forth. Some require doing a pass, passing one. There's some that require like a flip with the hand and then pass. So just pick one that's at your level. But you can find any of those stick passing games online. I will link to any resources that I have for them, of course, underneath here. But those are some other movement manipulative games you can try with your students. All right, we are down to our last two activities. Another one you could do is coloring or listening glyphs. So coloring glyphs, essentially, they just listen to a piece of music and they have to color the stuff a certain amount or a certain way. Like if they're listening to Aretha Franklin and it says, color her hair black if the song's slow or brown if the hair's fast, or the, not the hair's fast, the song's fast. Um, so there's those coloring glyphs. There's also just ones that are like color by note where like it'll have quarter rest, you color red, 16th notes, you color green. And so you have to know the names of those notes in order to do the activity right. So those are all the different types of listening and color glyphs that they can do. Uh, my students typically have a fun time with this. It's always just good to whip out at the end of the year anyway because it requires no thought. You just need to print it out beforehand. And so that's always a fun and easy one to do with your students. And then last but not least, just like I said in K2, give your students a free choice day. Chances are your students already have specific activities in mind of stuff that they would want to do at the end of the year. So I typically will just write them down on the whiteboard. We vote on two or three activities and we go from there and they have fun and they're always reviewing something and they don't realize that they're reviewing something, but they are. So give your students free choice day if you want. It's not going to go poorly. If you want to make it more controlled to where you pick the activities that you already have a couple in mind and they just vote from there, you can. But typically you will draw students in more if you allow them to have some choice with it as well. Hence student choice day. Those are all the lesson plan ideas that I have for grades three through five. Yes, some of them repeated and were over from K through two, but some were different. I mean, a lot of these you can do at the end of the year for any of these grades really, but I hope this was helpful for you. So let me know down in the comments below what your favorite takeaway lesson idea from here was down below. We're just going to keep rocking and rolling through to the end of the year. I promise you've got this. Some of you, you have like a week and a half left like my school does. Some of you are going until June. I know you can make it through friends. I'm really, I'm really rooting for you. So that concludes with that concludes this week's video and I will see you in another video super, super soon. Bye.